Last time we were looking at minimal APIs and I'd shown you how to put together a minimal API with all the main methods there, so the put, the post, the get, the delete, and we got it pretty much working. And we were looking at it in Swagger, but what we were missing was all that extra information that we can get in a good Swagger interface. So that's what we're going to be adding this time. Now I've made a couple of changes since we looked at it last time. One thing I've done is on the controller-based API, which really is there just so we can see how things used to be done, we can see that on here I have put lots and lots of extra metadata, so we're using XML documentation comments to get some information in there, plus the producer's response type and other things as well. And if we run that up, and if we look at something like the put, we can see we've got the summary of modifies existing book review, we can see we've got documentation on the parameters, we've got documentation on the body, so all that information is coming through. And what we're going to do is make that work with our minimal API. One other slight change I've made, what I was showing you last time, for the minimal API, we had this static class containing static methods for each one of the methods implementing an endpoint, we can see there. And then we had a separate class that I called the book review map, which is what took those static methods and mapped them onto the endpoints. But what I also mentioned you can do is do that all in one go. So here I've implemented that fully, this book review endpoint with lambdas, where we just have the one class that does the mapping and does the method implementations, but does them as lambdas. So you can see here where we do the map get onto that get one, there you can see we've got the beginning of the lambda and there we've got the body of the lambda. So that merges all into one place. But that difference actually leads to a difference in the way that we do the API documentation. So that's what we're going to look at here. And let's begin with the first one, the one that has the separate class. So if we just look at that endpoints, and so let's take, for example, the get one, because that's got some nice features in there. And let's just copy what we had on the reviews controller into there. So if we find the get by ID there, and then if I just take all of that information, so the attributes and the XML documentation comments, and copy that and paste it in at the beginning of that one. The one we don't need is that HTTP get, because we already know this is a get from the mapping we've done. But apart from that, that should be the sort of thing that we want to do. Now, we've also got to do one other quick thing here, which is we've actually got to activate XML documentation in our minimal API project. So a couple of things we need to do there. If we go to the controller API, there you can see we've got the setting for generating the documentation. So let's take that and put that into our minimal API. And then the other thing we've got to do, having got the project to generate the documentation, we've got to get Swagger to use it. And so if we look in the program for the controller API, that's actually that bit of code here. We looked at this in an earlier video when we we're looking at controller APIs, but we'll just copy that. And then in our program here, we will paste that in over there. And so that should now all be working. Let's set that as our startup project and run it. And we can immediately see that that's all worked fine. So there we've got on the get, we've got that summary, get a single book review by ID. And then we've got things like the ID of the book in there. And we've also got the fact that it can return a 200 or a 404 or a 500. That's not what it's actually returning. We're not going to bother about executing these. We're just seeing what information it's sending us back. And we've got those three, which we can see from there are the three that we specified using those attributes. So when you've got this completely separate class, that is very, very easy to do just to get that working. You'll notice, however, we have introduced a few warnings. The problem is that once you introduce XML documentation, you get a warning for any public class that doesn't actually have the documentation. And that's a key point because actually this class, this book review endpoints, doesn't really need to be public. It's not being used outside of this assembly. It's only being referenced in program. So actually, if we make that internal, we can avoid those warnings. We do still get some warnings, however. For example, what you can see here is, remember, when you've got a minimal API, you inject something like the DB context to each and every individual method. That's not needed for the API documentation, but it would be needed for the program documentation. So if you're irritated by those, you could also just disable that warning CS1573 and the other warnings as well. So I'm going to leave those in there, but that's the way that we can do it. But we can see that that all works perfectly well. So let's just 
copy over all of those from the original reviews controller. I won't waste your time by doing this on the video. I'll just copy them in and we'll jump to the end and see how that works. Okay, so now I've put all of those in there. We can just run through, see they're all there on the endpoints. And if we run that up again, we're going to see that we're getting the full documentation. So they've all got the summary. If we look at something like, say, the delete, we can see we've got the documentation on there. We've got the appropriate return types. Everything's working as we'd like it. So when we have the endpoints defined in a completely separate class, full of static methods, it's really exactly the same as with a controller, except, of course, in terms of the attributes, you don't have the HTTP GET or whatever it may be because that's handled separately. But if we have this using the lambdas, it's not going to work in quite the same way. So if we go back to our program, and if I just switch this mapping from the first one that was using the static methods to this one that's using the lambdas, the lambdas I haven't put any documentation on. So at the moment, when we run that up, we just see it back to what it was before. So let's have a go at that. Let's do the same one that we did. So let's do this with the get one. And so if we go to the endpoint there, let's find the get one, which we've got there, grab all of the metadata, and then go to our book review with lambdas. There we've got the get one, the get by ID. Let's just rearrange it a bit to make it a bit more legible. But then, there we've got the lambda, so let's just paste in all of that metadata. So we've got the attributes and we've got the documentation comments and we can lay it out like that. Now, you'll notice if you look carefully, we're immediately getting a warning on that because you cannot put XML documentation comments on a lambda. And that's going to give us a problem here, obviously. You can since c -sharp version 10, you can put attributes on a lambda. So that way of giving back the response types is going to be okay. But those documentation comments aren't going to work. And we can see that because if we now run that up and we go to the get one, then we can see it's got the correct return codes, 200, 404 and 500, but it's not managed to put in that summary or anything else like that. So we've got to do this in a different way. And in fact, although those attributes were working, it gets a bit messy if you mix together the two ways of doing it. So we can also see how we have an alternative way of actually specifying the return status codes in here as well. So let's get rid of all of that. And let's start doing this using what is actually a fluent API, which is all hooking off the end of this mapping. And with name is in fact, an example of one of those. So let's just tidy that back up. And the first one I'm going to show you is on the end of there, lay it out a bit differently. I'm going to put another one of these, which is produces. And this is how we can say what the return types are going to be. So we can do a produces. And then on there, we can just say status codes dot and then select the status code we want to go for. So in the case of our map get, we can return an OK. And then also let's continue that. We can do a dot produces and then status codes dot not found. And we could also do the dot produces status codes dot 500 internal server. And so having done that, we'll now see that when we run that up, then look at our get one. And that's still got the 200, the 404, and the 500, so that's working fine. Now, that's quite a neat way to go about doing things, but actually it does have a slight problem, which you also get if you do it with the attributes. That's to say that all of these producers are being very declarative, telling the world what status codes we could possibly send back, but it's not really checked at all by the compiler. So if I were to forget to have that 404, I can still return a 404, it's just an undocumented 404. And that's not going to be particularly helpful because that means somebody who is trying to use this, if it were more complicated, obviously it's pretty straightforward here, but if I were to go in there and we can see all that can happen is a 200 or a 500, but if I put in an invalid ID, then we get back the 404 and it's undocumented. So it's easy to make a mistake there. What we'd like to do is have the c -sharp compiler check this sort of thing for us rather than us having to just make sure it's matched up. Now, as it stands, that's quite tricky because what we're returning here 
is simply this task for i result, which is the interface common to all of those return types. But there's a really neat thing available here. There is a generic that allows you to have a union of these things. So what we can do in there is on that task, we say results, and then on that we can have our OK, which is generic for book review, as one of the possible return types, and then not found, which is not generic for anything, so we can just go for the not found. And so having done that, we can get rid of the produces, and we can see that it's now happy with that. So the OK is returning OK for book review, the not found is returning not found. And that will still work. And so we can see if we look at the get, it's giving us the possible returns of 200 and 404. But that's now going to be checked by the compiler. If, for example, I were to in here be returning something different, doesn't really matter what, let's say we went for an unprocessable entity, now we get a compiler error because the fact I'm returning an unprocessable entity here doesn't match what I've listed in there. So there's overloads of this results for as many possible results as you could imagine having. But if they don't match up, then you're going to get the error in there. So it's a nice extra safety check to have. Also, another thing you could get wrong, for example, if we just said we're returning OK, not OK with the body of book review, then again, we get the error there. So lots and lots of compile time checking, which is what for a C-sharp programmer, you always want to have. Python programmers, JavaScript programmers may see the world differently, but this is what we like about C-sharp. The one thing there is a slight problem of, though, in all of these results that we can put in there, like the OK and the not found, there is not an option for internal server error. The argument being, I suppose, that you don't actually return an internal server error, you would throw an exception, which would be handled by the system, which would cause that result. But if you want that to be something that is documented, you need to still put that in separately on there. And so that now means that although it's getting the regular returns from that results, we've got the extra one put in there. So you can have additional ones if for whatever reason that's what's going to happen. And so now when we run that up, we'll see that on the get we've got all three possible returns. OK, so that's how we can replace those attributes that are telling us what the return status is. What we'd also like to do is replace those XML documentation comments so that we can now actually have something like a summary. And that's easy enough to do. Again, with this Fluent API, we can say dot with summary. And then in there, we can put the text for the summary. So if we just go back to the endpoints we previously had, that was our summary. So we'll pop that in here. And that should now be our summary that appears. However, if we run that up, we're not getting any summary on there. We can see we've just got the get as it was before. There's one other thing you need to do, which is on the end here, you've got to say dot with open API. So basically, any one of these things like producers, they work in their own right. But things like with summary and some other ones we're going to see, that has to be kind of rounded off by putting this with open API. But now when we run that, then you can see we're getting the summary put in that right place. So rather than using the XML documentation here, we do it with a method, which in some ways you might find preferable because it means the IntelliSense might be a bit more helpful, though it's pretty good on the documentation comments as well. There is actually an alternative we can do here. Rather than having that with summary separately, on the with open API, we can do this sort of thing in here. So I can just put in a lambda in here. So let's call that op for operation. And then one thing you've got to remember to do this, you always return the operation. Sometimes you actually may create a new one to return, but we're just going to return the one coming in. But we're then going to modify it so we can say op.summary equals, and then use exactly the same thing that we've got there. So up to you whether you use with summary or with open API and do it on there. Also, while we're here, another thing we can do, we can do op.description and in there, not really sure what more I can say about this, but we can put in a more detailed description in all of that. And so now when we run that up, we can see there we're getting the summary. But if we drill in there, there we get the more detailed description inside there. We didn't actually do that on the controller. The way you can do that on the 
controller is pretty simple if as well as having the summary in here you can put a thing called a remarks and anything put in there is going to be the description that goes in that same place in the swagger. So we can see that we've managed to do a summary, we've managed to do a description. Also what we need to do is we need to be able to put in the information about the individual parameters, so the ID and that sort of thing. So let's do that. So what we've got to do is get hold of the parameters from this operation that we've brought in there. So what we can do is just say op.parameters and then that is going to be a list of the parameters and so we're going to get hold of parameter zero and then on there we can do something like dot and various things we can have but we're going to just go for description and then that equals and then once again let's just pinch the description from what we had before pop that in there and so that will give us our description something to watch out for here when we have this list of parameters don't be fooled into thinking it's a list of the c sharp parameters because obviously in that case we've got two of them the injected context and the id and it's the id that we want but it's not that list it's the list that we've got here so that's why the id is just item zero in the list and there's only that one item in there so now if we run that then we can see on our get as well as the summary and the description we've now also got the fact that that parameter is the idea of the book review and we've got all of the appropriate status codes coming back so that's the process we go through let's once again skip ahead i'm not going to bore you with all the detail but i'll put all of those in and then we can look at a few other issues that we have so i've put that all in there just a few things to highlight for example if we look at something like the get all where the only status it returns is okay then because this is a lambda we can just leave that to be inferred we don't have to put any return type on the lambda at all it's only in situations where there are multiple possible return types like we had with the get by id which could be okay or not found that's when we have to use the results in that so that's just one thing to notice the other thing to notice is if we have anything with a body so if we say go down and look at the put so in order to get all the documentation on there we have to have the summary obviously just describes what's going on then we have the parameter zero remember what i said a moment ago that that parameters list is the list of the parameters in the url so parameter zero is id so although the book review itself is a parameter to the c sharp method that doesn't count as a parameter here that counts separately as the request body so if you've got a request body you need to do the request body dot description so the updated review in that case or in the other example on the post the new book review but having done all of that when we run that up we'll now see that we have all the metadata in there so there we can see the summary we haven't done descriptions but we could do we've got the possible return types similarly on the post we've got the request body we've got the possible return types on the put we've got the parameter and we've got the request body and we've got the possible return type so all that information is coming through whether you prefer doing it this way or doing it with the attributes that's a matter of opinion if you're doing controllers you have to do it with the attributes and with the xml documentation if you're doing it this way you've got some degree of choice but i think really to be consistent i would probably do it all through the fluent api that seems the easiest way to go about it one last thing that we did in an earlier video when we were looking at APIs with controllers was the idea of grouping. So one last thing, if we run this up, we can see that we've got three gets and a post to put in the delete, and they're all kind of modeled together. Basically, by default, they're listed in alphabetical order of the URL, not anything else. What personally I find easy to understand is if we can group them together with all the gets and then the post to put and the delete or something like that. The grouping is the important thing. And we do that with the idea of tags. Now, when we're doing that with controllers, if we just nip over to this older bit of code that we saw in an earlier video, that was really quite fiddly to do because we had to have this swagger operation filter implement the interface. And then we had this bit of code that set up the tags. We'll see how that works in a moment in our own code. And then in the program, we had to put that operation filter 
into the swagger gen and get it to execute. And it was all a bit complicated. It's much more straightforward when we're using the minimal APIs because all we need to do is use this Fluent API to set that up. So let's go back to the top. And so the first one we had was the map get, forget all of them. And so all we need to do is on here, we just do a dot with tags, and then you can give it multiple tags, but we only want to give it one of them. And because we want to group on the method, I'm just going to say get in there for the get method. And then let's copy that. We've got the get by ID, that's also a get, so we'll pop that one in there. We've got the summary, which is also a get, so I'll pop that one in there. And then we've got the post, so let's paste that in, but change that to post. We've got the put, so again, we'll paste it in and change it to put. Could group them in any way you like, but just doing it by the verb here. And then that last one will change to delete. So really simple, much easier, I'd say, than what we had with having to have this operation filter. But now when we run that up, then you can see it's grouped them. It's still doing alphabetical order of those tags. So you might want to adjust that as well. But you can see we've got delete and then all of the gets together, the put and the post, which I think is much easier. So that's how we can do our Swagger documentation using a minimal API. If you're using it with an entirely separate class of static methods, then basically you can just copy over what you had in terms of the XML documentation and the attributes with a controller. If you're doing it with lambdas, you've got to do a bit more work, but in the end, that might be the better way to go. You could do that with the separate static as well. You just have to put all of that code into the method that's doing the mapping. So if we just look down here, so that book review map, that's where we've got all those maps. So you could put that information on the end there. It's up to you do it either way. So that was the last of our few videos on minimal APIs. Generally, I think they're going to be the way to go going forward. Although controllers have some advantage in terms of structure, there's more features coming in with minimal APIs. And for the most part, I think they're probably the way we're going to write APIs in .NET in future. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do subscribe, do click like, and I'll see you next time.